Today, we're going to be discussing Bernie Sanders. Yeah, that's it. Just talking about him for an episode. A little more complicated than that. Obviously, we're going to be talking about economics and how all of this is uh, going to play out. So, if you're interested, stay tuned for more. So, what's up, Lambo? What, so you're going to be voting for Bernie, you said? All right. Well, hey, it's, uh, it's your vote, bro, you know? I don't think you can vote, though, because you're, you're not American. You're a Mexican citizen. Oh, wait, never mind. You can't vote. Forgot. Oh, hey. What's up, guys? How's it going? And welcome back. Today is... Actually, I don't know what today is going to be by the time you watch this, all right? But today is today. <laughs> and welcome back. Today, like again, just like you saw at the beginning of the episode, uh, we're going to be talking about Bernie Sanders. And we're going to be talking about, not necessarily Bernie per se, but just talking about the things that he's been talking about lately and um, how all this is going to be affecting you in the future and Bitcoin price and literally the price of everything, even coffee. Okay? Mm. All right. So let me save that for later. So let's get started. Well, honestly, I don't got a script, I don't got anything. I'm just gonna turn this camera on like I always do and just start spitting out thoughts. I had a friend of mine out there, shout out to Chance. He decided that um, this would be a very good idea for an episode. Actually, I was asking him and others, hey, what do you guys think, you know, what I should make? And uh, he came up with this idea and I was like, oh, great, wonderful. Okay, so. I don't know if you guys have heard, but Bernie Sanders is back on the campaign trail. He's representing the Democrats, you know, Democratic movement and that whole thing. And um, he's been spitting out socialism. And it's all about socialism and stuff like that. Now, again, guys, before you guys get too deep into this, you know, meaning, uh, you know, you start throwing me under the bus or not throwing me under the bus or hating me or not hating me before I even get started. Listen, guys, this is a non-biased view on the whole situation okay I, I can care really I, I, I give three fucks about this guy all right or you know who's gonna get voted in next or what have you I'm just letting you guys know how it is and what's going on now I think at the end of the day when once we get to the 2020 election they might actually be putting Bernie up against Trump and Trump might most likely win believe it or not and it won't be until the next time around that Bernie wins now who knows Bernie could win in 2020 most likely might be winning in 2024 but even if bernie isn't necessarily the candidate and isn't necessarily the guy there whoever is going to be representing the next change is going to be bringing socialism with them okay now i want to you know dissect socialism a little bit and um to make sure that we're all on the same page now according to the definition of socialism the u.s the ussa the United Socialist States of America, all right, if you want to break it down even further, um, they themselves are already a socialist country. Because again, uh, social security um, and all these other social um, programs that exist, you know, everything from subsidies to farms, subsidies to, you know, big pharma, all kinds of subsidies, you know, and um, if you know anything about socialism in which where the government takes over the corporations or they take over you know um, you know like let's say um, the nation's oil reserves or so on and so forth well what we kind of have is kind of like a corporate socialism in the US in which you know corporations are the ones running things and not necessarily the government but regardless oh man my back is fucking killing me today sorry about that but regardless we have a socialism okay that's literally it already so the fact that they're touting and pushing out there the idea of socialism in the future well the reality is again if we already have socialism then why are they selling us socialism well they're not really selling you socialism they're selling you communism which is the next step in this whole cycle right now we're pretty much like in the cap late capitalist stage you know we're in the late stages of capitalism and we're already mostly subsidized all around the board you know all across the board and that's where the socialism aspect comes in now now let's let's uh, kind of like diverge real quick okay before we continue with socialism aspect of this whole situation now 
when 2008, 2007 happened and we all of a sudden inv uh, invented or created uh, this thing called QE, which is a quantitative easing, which was bailing out the banks, bailing out all of these companies that put us in debt and, and, and put the whole, the whole uh, nation and the whole world um, in dire straits. Well, again, what, what, uh, what we did in order to fix that was that we created this thing called quantitative easing, which is, again, print more money, just print, print, print money out of fucking thin air. Fucking Big Birth is loud today. Gee, as soon as I fucking said something, and, you know, I, I was like, I was thinking to myself, don't say nothing because the thing's about to shut up. Anyways. So, you, you know, what QE was and what all this, you know, money, money printing was, it was a way in order to keep this capitalist uh, bubble going and going and going and going. And why do they need to get it going and keep it going? Well, it's simply because what we have right now is a system, a society based on debt and nothing but debt. And because that's the case, um, I don't wanna to get too detailed into this. Again, if you guys want real, like hardcore information, hours and hours, you know, just look at the links down at the bottom of the description, especially like uh, the history of money by Mike Maloney, all the way at the bottom. Should be the last, last thing um, in my description. But anyways, if you know anything about the history of money, you know where we're at in this stage of the whole economic cycle. We're still far away from an end. All right, a lot of people out there still are thinking that, you know, oh my God, you know, the, the whole system is about to come to an end. The dollar's about to come to an end. We're about to hit a gold standard. What a blah, blah, blah. Listen, no guys, you know, we're so far away from all this shit, it's not even funny. And so, again, you know, when I hear someone like Bernie Sanders or people out there saying, oh, we need, you know, um, universal health care. You, know, you know, we need to pay for everyone's college. We need to pay for this, we need to pay for that. All I'm seeing is, again, more money printing, more money printing. now. I'm not here saying that we don't need to be paying for education. I, again, I, I think that we should be paying for education. I think that we should have, you know, um, you know, uh, everyone have free med medical attention. Ah, sorry, man, that fucking Bertha's keeping me uh, distracted here. But again, you know, I, I do believe that, you know, in a nation so, you know, such as the United States, just like every other first world country, that yes, the nation, you know, with all the taxes that we pay and everything that, the way it's set up, that yes, no citizen should ever have to pay for healthcare. No citizen should ever have to pay for school and so on and so forth. Because again, you know, there's plenty of nations around the world that are third world countries and people don't have to pay for medicine or education or other things. <coughs> Cuba. <coughs> Anyways, and other nations, okay? But the point is, it's like, you know, what's going on right now is that, as you guys already, if you guys don't feel it, I'm telling you, is that they are pillaging the human race. You know, they're pillaging literally everyone that's attached to the dollar. They're pillaging every American right now more and more each day. So as each one of these crashes keeps coming up, meaning, you know, the same thing that we had at the end of 2018, the same thing that we're going to have at the end of this year, the same thing that's going to keep repeating over and over again. They're just going to keep bailing things out. They're going to keep bailing out and they're going to keep the system going until the people can't take it anymore. Once the people cannot take it anymore and they're in dire straits, at that point, something like Bernie Sanders sounds freaking amazing. And something like a socialist president will become an actual thing and they will most likely vote someone like that in with those ideas because again you know right now everyone's like oh how are you going to pay for this how are you going to pay for that how are you going to pay for this but once we come once we get into full socialism you know borderline communism at that point people are not going to be questioning you know how are we going to pay for this how are we going to pay for that they're just going to be like oh great they're going to pay for all this stuff we're going to have universal basic income we're going to have all, all our you know medical bills paid we're going to have all our education paid we're going to have everything paid for so again, this is all late stage capitalism. And what's, what's gonna happen is that everything, I mean, literally as of today, as of this moment right now, everything is just becoming more and more expensive. And it's just gonna continue going in that direction. Things are just gonna continue to get more and more expensive as the days, as the months go on, as we, you know, hit these, um, in these corrections that we hit, you know what I mean? Meaning again, remember we were hitting all time highs, then October came and, you know, the whole stock market and all the whole market, you know, corrected, it fell, it tanked. And then we, you know, as soon as end of January hit, we were already back to business, back to usual. And this, I think the same thing's gonna happen. And it's not that I think, I know these things are gonna happen because they've already announced it. They already have like a thing set and scheduled and and, and uh, it, it's it's already there, you know what I mean? Like literally it's it's on the map, it's on the, the roadmap, okay? The, the government's roadmap. Literally you can find, 
you know, if you do your, your research out there, again, I'm not the research guy. I'm just here to tell you how it is so you guys can, you know, go out there and find out even more. But again, if you, you really go out there and look at everything that the government's doing, that Trump is doing and so on and so forth, uh, the Fed is doing, you know, they've already laid out the plan, you know, they've already laid out the dates, they've already laid out a lot of these things and it's just a matter of time, you know, until we get to these moments when these things will start getting initiated. So, you know, what I mean by that is that it's just going to be print, 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 and every single freaking thing that you see moving forward concerning the government, concerning our economy, concerning the dollar, it's just going to be print, 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 print into oblivion. Okay? So, again, by the time we get to a Bernie Sanders or a socialist type president or presidential candidate, you know, the whole print, print, print is going to be in full force. It's going to be even worse than where, where it is now. And um, by the time that they get elected, it's going to be very easy to, you know, pay for all these things because, again, you know, the printer is gone haywire and we need to put this money somewhere because, again, the... The, the economic problem is trying, you know, the, they're trying to solve this economic problem by printing it into oblivion, which is impossible. You cannot print, you know, this debt problem away. You can't. They're trying, but you can't. Again, please look at the history of money. Check out Mike Maloney. Check out, you know, more information on that. It's, 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 it's all with cartoons and all kinds of graphs and all kinds of information, all these documentaries talking to you about the history of money and how this has happened since the Romans, okay? Nothing, none of this is new. Things change here and there, but it's literally the same exact thing, okay? For reals. And in fact, you know, our own situation right now with the United States of America closely, most, most closely resembles the civilization of old Rome, of the Roman Empire. I mean, that's, that's literally the correlation, the closest correlation we have. Because again, this has happened, you know, over and over again, civilization after civilization, you know, um, yeah, just over and over again. Just again, takes little f different forms here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. Now, when you know it comes to like the price of everything, you know what I mean? Everything is just going to continue in inflating into oblivion. All right, and uh, we're going to see all these currencies and all these countries, you know, be affected hardcore before the U.S. gets affected. Again, we've talked about this many, 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 many times before. All right. And, you know, right now is the time for you to just start getting ready. And, like, not just listening to me, but listening to other more educational um, things out there before it gets too late and you're not able to react, okay? So, please, you know, right now, that's why, you know, you most likely are watching me. Um, maybe not. I mean, maybe you're just watching me because you're watching Mexico videos and then this one came on, whatever. But the point is that we need to start educating ourselves more on all of these things and exactly what do they mean and how they're going to impact us and how all this is going to change our lives for the better or for the worse in the very near future and the long term okay <laughs> sorry battery died but um just to bring this whole conversation you know to a close and bring it all full circle the end of the day the reason i'm really bringing up bernie sanders and bringing up the whole socialism aspect and bringing up all this is because again you know history doesn't repeat it rhymes and right now we're going through a period in which the united states is very close to falling into becoming a full-blown communism and it would be very um, naive of us to think to think that that could not happen to the US because again look at China has billions of people they're a communist and there's other countries around the world in which they already have some sort of communism or instilled communism and how they got there was exactly the same exact way as to how we got here again just look at Russia Russia is now you know they came out of communism and they're going into back into capitalism and starting the whole thing over again the whole cycle over again so again if you want to look at you know, if you want more details into how this is all going to play out, just look at Russia and look at how, you know, the how Russia became a communism, the whole the whole um, lifespan of the communism of around 100 years, maybe a little less, I forgot, um, that happened in Russia. I think it was like 80 years. And then at the end, you know, um, when communism finally got toppled, fell over, and eventually we came, you know, with Boris Yeltsin, then uh, Putin, and where we're at now. Okay? So, you know, that, that has to happen to the U.S. Um, we, we still haven't even hit the communism part yet. I hope it doesn't happen. I pray that it doesn't happen. But, you know, we, we got to, you know, the way that we're going right now, I don't see it not happening. All right? But, again, it's, your, it's our job as people 
as, as, as the U.S. citizens or whatever you want to call yourself out there, you know, for us to educate ourselves, educate others, and figure out a way to fix this problem, okay, before it's unfixable, like for reals, for reals, all right? And, um, you, you know, right now we're already literally, I, I, you know, communists, you know, we're like, you know, it's, it's full-blown socialism, and again, you know, the lines start getting blurred the, 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 the further we go along with this. Now, let me just talk about Gregory Manorino real quick, because, you know, Gregory Manorino, if you don't know who he is, again, links are at the bottom, you know, you can check him out. He posts daily videos talking about a lot of these things. So, you know, Gregory Manorino, you know, made a good point, you know, as to where we can end this tomorrow, literally, you know what I mean? Like the whole, everything that, that when people talk about, oh, Trump is doing, playing 13D chess, and these guys are doing that, and they're doing this, and they're trying to fix that, and they're trying to do that, and they're trying to do this, and do, listen, it's all bull baloney, literally, because at the end of the day, it's really, really easy for, you know, the whole system to, you know, change over to a new system in which, you know, could actually work. But they're choosing not to, because in order for them to do that, they would have to leave the debt system behind. And they don't want to leave that debt system behind, at least not yet. So they have to still run it to the ground. There's still, there's still life left in this debt machine, okay? We're still, we're still not even in negative interest rates. There's still so many fucking things that are still left for us to get through before the whole thing implodes. But again, right now, Trump, if he choose to do so, you know, he could change, you know, he could literally fix the whole problem overnight. For reals, it's not that hard. I mean, literally, what one thing he would have to do is um, reevaluate gold to its proper, correct price. You know, meaning get rid of all the paper derivatives and then give gold the actual price that it belongs, which is around 10 times higher than where it's at now. Then once that's done, then we got to reprice every single asset on the planet. You know, everything from coffee to concrete to oranges to 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 oil to everything and price it in the new price that is derived from gold. And then also getting the dollar and you know reevaluating the dollar in gold. And then you know obviously things are gonna get more expensive and things are gonna you know all get overblown in, in price, but that would, believe it or not, believe it or not, that would actually save the economy. Not just the economy, save the dollar, save the country, save the world, save a lot of fucking things. And they could just do that like that. Sure, you know, when they do that switch, it might cause some turmoil and it's not going to be a very easy transition, you know, meaning it's, you know, then for several months, maybe a few, few years, things are going to give you rough, just rough. But hey, as soon as that's over, it's over and it's all fucking clear skies and, you know, blue, hold on, blue skies and clear skies, whatever, you know what I mean. It's just clear skies ahead, all right? <laughs> Sorry, my English also goes on time. But... The, the, the reality is that they're not going to do that. They don't want to do that, and it's not going to happen. You gotta, we all got to wake the fuck up, okay? That's not going to happen. They're just not going to do that. And, um, for example, you know, he was also talking the other day about H.R. 5404. That is a bill that literally Trump proposed back when he became president, you know, a little bit after he became president, in order for the dollar to be reevaluated in gold, meaning that the dollar would be priced in gold. Which again, this is kind of like a, a retarded thing because as he was explaining it, what we need to do is what I, what I was just describing earlier, not get the dollar and price it in gold at, at today's price. And yet, again, you know, like Gregory Manorino said, what that legislation is that he has, you know, put out there that hasn't even been touched yet is literally just a carrot that's being dangled in front of anyone out there thinking that we're going to, you know, make this transition into a gold standard. It's not going to happen. Again, we can just go to a gold standard and save the dollar and be number one at the top like that. I already told you what you have to do. Just rewind the video and watch it again. And that's it. And again, if you want even more details on exactly how it's done, watch Gregory Manorino. And, um, Specifically, Wednesday afternoon's episode, and he will literally tell you what's going on, and how, and you know how how it's how it can be fixed. But it's not going to be fixed because they don't want it to be fixed, okay? And again, you know, this is why I talk so much about you know things like, you know, Bitcoin, things like crypto, things like you know all that stuff. Oh yeah, man, I forgot I, I forgot to move the camera back. Um, and, and why I talk about so much stuff like this, because again, these are the tools that we will be using when once a major transition happens. You know, you gotta remember that Bitcoin and crypto is still very, you know, um, new. 
It hasn't even matured into anything, you know, yet. And um, it's gonna take time, just like computers took time, just like uh, cell phones took time, just like pretty much every technology, you know, whether it's a, the computer, I mean a computer, whether it was a television or the radio or uh, the airplane or, or, you know, so many things, so many things. So it's kind of like the same thing. We still need a while for it to mature. And I think that it's gonna start really maturing, you know, within the next several years. And it's all gonna cu culminate with, um, you know, the breakdown of the system. And we're gonna have a new system to go on. Because again, if they were to just, fix it right now and just you know reevaluate the price of gold you know reprice everything and just kind of go back to you know how we're, we're so you know where we're supposed to be literally just go just put everything back at fair value then again you know something like crypto you know wouldn't even would not be as as necessary as we would once you know thought again it will still be very necessary you know like a lot of people around the world and in unbanked situations in very poor communities and whatever you know there's like this still a humongous swath you know of the population of earth billions and billions of people in which they can actually take full advantage and need need crypto they need something like that okay so it's still going to be a viable thing no matter what happens but the reality is that unfortunately fortunately and unfortunately you know fortunately that we have this tool but unfortunately the, the is going to be the fact that we are going to have to use this tool and we're going to have to take matters into our own hands like always remember how they always say if you want something done right you got to do it yourself so that's where we're at now where the human population has to wake the fuck up and we got to do this our damn selves we got to take eventually once the system breaks down we'll have the power and it's just you know a matter of uh taking the proper steps to get there which again guys if you why i bring up history so many times it's not going to be that hard it's really going to be a pretty easy transition we're already making that transition despite every all you know all the efforts for them to thwart you know um our progress so crypto's here to stay all this is here to stay but you got to remember that you know we also got to remember all these other external things that are happening you know and uh again crypto is great technology is great all this shit's great but it's not so great if you are you know a prisoner of your own mind a prisoner in your own country a prisoner period end the story and you know what i mean debt slave etc 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 okay so remember we have there's so much many there's just so many so many elements to this thing and we need to you know we know we got we again we got to do all that work okay remember it's 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 so much more it's not just doing homework on one aspect of this it's doing all our homework on all aspects of this and then putting it all together until we have you know solutions because there's going to be many solutions to all of these problems because as you guys know there's a lot of problems that need to be solved guys thank you so much for watching thank you thank you so much for being here thank you so much for all your love all your support all you guys on patreon all you guys you know donating all the freaking time all you guys again not just donating um funds but donating knowledge uh, interacting within the discord community hanging out on twitch you know where we're having all our fun all the time you know we're, we're starting to do uh misconnections you know we're reading craigslist misconnections on twitch and having a lot of fun with that so again you know during the day it's it's a lot more serious stuff you know we talk about everything from motivation to crypto to the state of the world to what's going on in mexico to all kinds of insane and awesome things all around you know the world that are you know awesome topics that you guys are enjoying uh, uh you know so the analytics are telling me anyway um but there's still more elements to me again you know i'm on instagram you know i'm always you know making videos if you guys already know on sunday i always post all my instagram stories for the week i'm on twitch i'm on d live i'm on you know all over the place i'm on twitter i'm i'm all i'm all over the place man i'm like a fucking disease literally but i'm a good disease i promise okay i'm the good kind i'm the one that you want all right Anyways, all right, guys. Well, I'm gonna get out of here because I feel this cold medicine is already taking its effect. <laughs> I'm the disease, cold medicine. Again, you see, uh, not funny. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share. Please hit that bell icon. Please follow me on all the social medias. Don't forget to join the Discord. Don't forget to, you know, catch me everywhere. And uh, more importantly than anything, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Stay awesome. Love you guys, and um, Lambo, Lambo says hi. He loves you guys. He, he really wants more camera time, so, you know, I'm going to give it to him now. All right, enough camera time. Back to me. Love you guys. See you guys manana. You know, I think, I think young kids are getting tricked right now and think just because it's a technology boom and just because they understand it that they have this great advantage over 45-year-old executors. 
it's audacity, which I love. Channeled properly, it gives them the lack of fear to do things. So I really don't talk a lot about it because I don't want to stop it because I think it's their greatest gift as well. But I think it's patience, I think it's lack of experience, and the biggest one is lack of talent. Every young kid thinks they're entitled to be an entrepreneur now. It's the cool thing. Truth is, it's not gonna work out. Like, it just isn't, the math doesn't work out. Like, 98% of the people that are starting startups are gonna lose. And again, the reason I started with the economic, like, the economic growth of the globe is keeping a fake entrepreneur alive. Most of your friends that in their 20s that have businesses aren't actually making money if they're in tech. They've raised capital and they're losing money every month. That's ultimately something that doesn't work out.